Well, we started back in 2009. Um, I was had been having a garden for a number of years and wanted to kind of expand that. And I decided to try raspberry plants when I saw them at Lowe's one day. And like, you know, I love these things. I'm gonna put one out. And I put it out, put a blackberry plant out and just kind of started playing with it. And, uh, enjoyed it and I thought well you know I've never heard of anybody in this area growing these so I decided well let's look into it and I, I found some distributors up north who sell high quality plants and I bought a few and put a few of them out uh, started playing with those a little bit learning every single day something different about them and then as it just it, as I kept going with it I decided well let's expand a little bit more and that's about the same time that I talked to a friend of mine who had been selling at the farmers market for Quite a, long, quite a long time. And he kind of talked me into selling the berries at the market and expanding from there. So how many raspberry plants do you have now? Uh, it's actually hard to say on the raspberry plants because you buy them and they're in a rootstock. And then after that, they just kind of grow and form a long hedgerow. So right now, uh, I probably have, I'm gonna say about 300 feet of raspberries. So that's, that is enough to keep you busy. Yes, yes it is, <laughs> because you have to pick them every two to three days, ideally. And so Great Berries Farms, you guys have more than just raspberries though, right? Yes, we've got a few blueberry plants, some blackberries and strawberries in the raspberries. Where do you sell all your berries? Primarily with the strawberries, I sell those at the, uh, at the road right here because I'm on this major highway. Um, through Facebook, I sell quite a few. And then I've got some commercial customers that buy them. The raspberries, I sell those mostly at the farmer's market, and then I picked up a commercial customer who's buying the majority of those this year. Well, Michael, I know that, that your wife is in extension. You, you have three kids. You have a, another public job. Why do you do this? Well, I grew up on a farm, and my dad's best friend always talked about the tobacco and how it gets in your blood. And I guess uh, this was kind of my way of, you know, working out what's gotten in my blood with the farming bug. and. I chose this because I can do this on a small scale. Mm -hmm. I don't have the finances to buy a great big old farm like I grew up on and farm, you know, great big row crop and tobacco and cattle. So I thought, well, since I'm expanding my garden, expanding the berries, let's just focus on that. And then you guys have a roadside stand when things are, you know, available right yes, here at the do. house. Yeah, I bought a trailer, a pop-up trailer, and it has shelves on it. It just works out real well to go out there and I can lay everything out and then I can put a sign up at the road and tell them what we have on, on hand. My phone number's on the sign out there, so if they want to give me a call, they can give me a call. Today we're featuring berries, and there are so many varieties of berries grown in South Central Kentucky, and today we're showing you a Kentucky Proud Plated It Up Very Berry Salsa. The name alone is super fun, and just with that kind of a title, you know it's going to be a spectacular dish. So there are very few ingredients in this recipe and those are the recipes that I just love the most. We're using blackberries, we're using strawberries, blueberries, and this month's specialty crop is raspberry. So of course we have to include those. And then we're also gonna add apple. And today I'm using just a gala apple. Those are really sweet, it's a really sweet apple and it's a great way to get some crunch that this recipe is gonna need with all of those soft berries. You're gonna use about one cup of each berry variety and then about three or four so cups of the apple. So you wanna make sure that they are diced evenly but, um, but to the size that you could put them on a cracker or a chip. Now all of the produce that we're using, we've washed before we started to handle it. And so you wanna make sure you give all your produce a good rinse. And now we're gonna do the easy part and the oh so colorful part. We're gonna start with those apples that we've diced up. We're using uh, about two and a half cups, three cups if you want to, of those. We're gonna use some of these blueberries. Aren't those gorgeous? Mm -hmm. I love blueberries. Let's put those in. And strawberries. You'll notice all of, all of the strawberries and the apples and all the berries are about the same size. And then blackberries. And raspberries, this month's specialty featured item. Raspberries are so tender. And so once you put these in, you wanna be a little careful with stirring or combining the ingredients, just because you don't want them to completely break apart. For the topping to sweeten these sweet berries up just a little bit more, we're gonna use a strawberry preserve. 
and we want about just a tablespoon and a tablespoon of brown sugar. And we'll take a whisk and let's combine all of those ingredients together. This is the really good part. And now we're going to pour it over top of our berry mixture. And all of that brown sugar, strawberry preserve topping is going to coat the berries just a little at a time. You do want to do it really easily so that you don't break apart the berries. But of course if you do, it's still just as tasty. This recipe is going to marinate and chill in the refrigerator for 30 minutes before you want to serve it. It's actually a really great recipe to make ahead of time. You know I'm all about those recipes that are quick, easy, and that you can, you can create convenience in preparing it ahead of time. This is one of those that you are going to be able to do that, but it's also super impressive. Look how beautiful all of those colors are. And you guys, every single thing, all of the fruit and the produce used in this recipe, you can find right here, grown locally in South Central Kentucky with producers and farmers that you know and love. Isn't that awesome? I have this really adorable strawberry bowl that I'm gonna put my salsa in just to play on the theme a little bit. This is a really delicate recipe, and so although children and kids are going to love it, it's also one that you can impress all your friends should you have a baby shower or a wedding shower. To serve the salsa, today I'm going to use graham crackers, but you could also use cinnamon pita chips, vanilla wafers, whatever it is that maybe you have, you have a preference for, or you could catch on sale. 